Hello and welcome. Although spinning your sticks doesn't mean you are a great drummer and basically has little to do with technical ability, it does help to entertain a crowd. And after all, the more you can draw a crowd's attention to the band and music, which is ultimately the goal, the better off you will be received. Plus, it can be fun and keep you from getting bored, especially when you are playing a pretty basically easy song. Today I will demonstrate a few different stick spins and tricks for you to experiment with. I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, let's have some fun now. I'm going to show you a few different stick spins and stick tricks just to mess around with. The first ones are going to be through your fingers like this. It's just a basic wave motion. You might want to start with just going in your thumb like this to get your hand in the motion. Eventually move out to the stick. Try to grasp it somewhere in the middle. I like to get it in the center of my fingers like this. I'm going to grab it like this and just throw my wrist back and get that wave motion going. You can also throw it forward, backward, and forward. And for this one, I'm going to be coming up through my fingers like this. I'm going to slip my finger underneath Grab it, roll it around, come back up through, and grab it. So for this exercise, I'm going to combine the two of them. I'm going to play at 120 beats per minute. Um, the hardest part of this is trying to free up your hands to be able to play the beat without screwing up your drumming. You don't want to be messing up your drumming. If you are, then maybe you don't want to spin your sticks until later on because keeping the beat and keeping time is your most important thing. So at 120 beats per minute, I'm going to combine the two examples I just showed you. So this next one is just a cool little effect. It's just a half spin coming off of your hi-hat. This next one is a full spin as we're playing in a rhythm. Next one is just kind of a juggling trick I do when I'm throwing a flam in at the end of a phrase. So much a technique is just an idea if you're playing you only have two hands be able to free up a hand while you're playing if you have something that goes wrong playing along old stick in the mouth trick
guys, this is Jim Redmond. I'm just wanting to talk to you today, trying to give you a little bit of inspirational stories and whatnot to help you on your journey as you're starting out. Um, I know sometimes practice will get a little crazy day after day, week after week. Feel like you're not really making any progress, but that's normal. You're gonna have breakthroughs. You might go a month and not feel like you're making any progress and then all of a sudden you'll start getting this thing down and you'll be like wow you know so I just recommend like I was saying you know a half hour to an hour a day practice you know consistency pays off get yourself into a routine to where like for me when I first started every day after school I could not wait to come home from school and go out in the shed out back put on my headphones and play to all my favorite songs some of my favorite bands and usually it'd be like the live albums just because the drumming on those albums would seem a little more flamboyant than say like the studio albums i always like the live feel of the drums you can feel the energy a lot more um for instance live after death by iron maiden was one of my favorites uh exit stage left by rush um Speak of the Devil by Ozzy Osbourne, which featured a bunch of old Black Sabbath songs. Uh, Tommy Aldridge played the drums on that. Great drummer. Anyway, those those are bands I like. Uh, obviously, you're going to have your own, but um, just to go out there, I mean, you go to school every day, you're taking math tests, or you go to work, and it's like drumming should be something that's fun you know let's make this thing fun put on them headphones and pretend you're up on stage and even if you're not playing the parts right you're you're still having fun playing and you're rocking out and you're doing your thing and uh that's that's how you get inspired with this kind of stuff and uh also set some long-term goals some short-term goals i would say first off you know the first month just a goal of maybe okay now i can play a song all the way through you know maybe six months down the road it's like you know i'm gonna start a band get some of my buddies together and start up my first band uh, a year down the road all of a sudden hey you know we're playing our first show you know whether it's in front of 10 people or whatever you know you're you're out there performing in front of people and getting that applause from you know some people you've never either mad or i don't know just seeing how they react to your playing and the music you're doing and you know and then maybe five years down the road you'll find yourself in the studio recording your first album um i'd like to share a few short stories of just some things that's happened to me with my career and not to be bragging or anything it's just to give you some inspiration and maybe you know set your goals a little high because we're dreamers it's okay to dream and dream big because you don't know who's gonna make it you know it could be you you could be the next greatest drummer um why not you know so uh one of the first stories i'd like to share is uh of many um so playing out in the the band circuit we got to where we were opening up for a lot of national acts and stuff like that and uh, got to know some of these bands pretty well and uh, Slaughter is a band that we've done many shows with and we happened to be setting up to do a show with them. Their drummer at the time, Timothy Diderot, was late getting to sound check and uh, they asked if I'd get up and do a sound check for him. So obviously, yes, I, you know, I'm like, sure, I'll get up and do a sound check on the drums. And so I got up and sound checked the drums for him. And then we proceeded from there to, to play four or five songs. And uh, it's a surreal moment to look over and be playing with these guys that actually wrote these songs, you know, and playing these songs from Slaughter. You know, I'm looking at Mark Slaughter over there and Dana Strom and, Jeff Blando and I'm up there and just jamming along with him, you know, and so that was really a cool moment, you know, priceless. Um, another one was uh, the guitar player for Tesla, Frank Cannon. Uh, we've done many shows with Tesla as well and got to know them guys really well, but Frank Cannon was coming through town just doing kind of a solo project, doing an acoustic set and uh, 
he was, you know, invited us to come hang out and watch the show and all that stuff. But a few hours before the show, he actually contacted us and got saying, you know, it might be kind of a neat idea to have a, a band back me up while I'm playing. And uh, so with about three hours notice, we're like, yeah, sure, we, we could do that. And, uh, um, you know, just send us over a set list and that. And uh, so I head over to my bass player, Dave Penrod's house to run over some of these songs. And I go pull on up in front of his house and there's this big old tour bus sitting in front of his house. And I'm like, what the crap, you know, and get there and it's Frank Hannon. And he showed up early and we went down on the bunker, our, our practice area and proceeded to jam for a good hour and a half, you know, just all these different songs and stuff and started playing some Tesla songs. And one of the very first songs I ever learned from Tesla was called Modern Day Cowboy. And just to look over and know that I'm sitting here playing this with this guy that wrote this song that I grew up with listening to, you know, many years ago. And here I am jamming with him. I mean, again, these, these moments are priceless. And, uh, so I'd like to share one more really short story. Um, when I was speaking of playing out in the clubs and stuff like that, uh, playing this little club, there's, you know, a couple hundred people in there or something. And, uh, uh, got done with the first set and went out and was just talking to people and found out, you know, that the bass player from Bon Jovi was sitting out in the audience, Hugh McDonald. And, you know, he came up and started talking to us and everything and says, you know, is it okay if I get up and play a couple songs to you guys? And we're like, well, yeah, by all means, you know, get up there and play some songs. So the next set we got him up there and he, he played the whole next set with us and, you know, being the professional he is, he just knew all these songs already, but we obliged him and threw in a couple Bon Jovi songs, you know, and again, you know, here we're playing She's a Little Runaway by Bon Jovi and we're looking over, you know, the guy that he's touring the world up on these big stages, you know, these huge venues and all this stuff. And here we are, just this little band, you know, in a club getting to jam with him. And so anyway, these are just a few stories of many. And I know many other musicians too, that's got great stories of stuff that they've done and people they've met. And uh, I just say these things, you know, to, to keep you inspired and motivated to have a, a, a bigger picture, uh, get a vision in your head. and. You know, be realistic about it. Yeah, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight, but, you know, a lot of hard work. And uh, it's hard work, but it's a lot of fun work, too. I mean, the rewards are great when they come. So keeping that in mind, you know, I will uh, hopefully inject a few little stories here and there throughout the lessons. But in the meantime, just keep practicing, keep plucking away, and just keep at it. You know, don't get discouraged. Everybody has their bad days, we have our good days, and I'll tell you, the good days are well worth it when they come, so just keep at it. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.